Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is Red Hat Summit, and this is The Cube, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman, and Matt Hicks is here as the Vice President of Software Engineering for OpenShift and Management at Red Hat. Matt, welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much, good to be here. So this is where all the action is, is management, and management of clouds, and inter-clouds, and intra-clouds, and it's the sort of next big battleground, and you guys seem to be doing really well there. You have a lot of momentum. It's been a good, it's been a good year. I think it's going to be a great year going forward because it, it, it adds a lot of customer value. You know, they're seeing the drive to get applications across all these environments, and I think we've hit a good balance of what we can provide in OpenShift, our middleware portfolio management, and you hear a lot of customers talking about it uh, all through Summit. So. Well, we saw some pretty sick demos this morning. Yeah. <laughs> it, well, I mean, I got to ask you. So I saw, it was basically the reference model was, okay, you got some, Web Logic and WebSphere apps, yep. you know, wink, wink, and uh, you want to modernize them, and so yeah. you guys showed like a five-click modernization process. Yeah. Is it, is it really that simple? Are people really, really doing that? Yeah, we we have customers that have moved thousands of applications like that, and and they're all different sorts of applications. But going from a proprietary EE stack to getting on something closer to EAP to deploying it on OpenShift, that is our bread and butter. And it's great because EAP can take advantage of OpenShift, uh, it lets customers replatform the apps that they have, and like we said in the keynote, it sort of frees up your time then to start building the fun stuff, building the next apps, and um, yeah, we've had a ton of success with that. Yeah. Matt, so we had the opportunity to talk to some of the innovation award winners. What we haven't actually gotten to cover too much yet is all the news. So there were a number of announcements in your space. Wonder if you could help us kind of unpack that for our audience. <laughs> sure thing. Yeah. So we, yeah, you will hear a lot about the just the enterprise production adoption of the new technologies because one of the things for us, it's, it's easy to come up and talk about new technologies. We like actually bringing customers up that have taken that new technology to production. So that's one of the big themes you'll see here at Summit. We launched OpenShift IO, which for us, like we've had great success of OpenShift as a hybrid app platform, prod, but as you heard from United Health Group Optum this morning, they have 10,000 plus developers to roll that out to, and we knew we needed to close the gap on how do you empower developers, so OpenShift IO was the new cloud-based services um, for that. We will also announce and talk about our container health index, so when you start really making the bet on containers, how do, you, how do you know what's inside of them? How do you get a simple grading system to understand like A through F, uh, how well maintained is this? As well as being able to look under the covers and understand what goes into that A or what goes into that yeah, F. Yeah, and, and Matt, may, maybe explain that a little bit more because I, I think about like, you know, okay, I remember in like kind of the virtualization world, yeah. I understood that so many of containers uh, live a lot shorter life. So yeah. um, is there, you know, is this just a, a dashboard that rolls that up? Because I want to know probably the general health of what's going on because mm -hmm. there's no way humans going to be able to keep track of it. I mean, we're not all Google with two billion containers, yeah. uh, you know, being b brought up and killed every week, but it tends to be, at least for, from what I've seen, tell me if you see otherwise, that most containers are still much shorter lived than, you know, OS's or, you know, VMs were before. You know, I, I think that's, it's one of the advantages is that they can be pretty volatile like that. In fact, you know, we have capabilities like in OpenShift, like image streams driven to say, how do you respond and incorporate this? But at the end of the day, if you, know, you could grab a container that in our world has an A rating, no security vulnerabilities today, and in a week, you could have multiple critical CVEs that have been opened that now affect that container. And so the benefit of containers is, you can re-roll them and you can consume that update, but if you don't know about it and you stay on that old version, you carry the same risk as if you had an out-of-date OS um, that was very static. Yeah, it, so. I think that, that answers, I, I think back to, you know, uh, you know, banks used to have that golden image, yeah. and they would, you know, harden that, and they'd leave it that way for two to five years, right? Yep. And we, yeah. we all laugh because my, my friends in the security space, it's like that's the biggest problem we have is you're yep. not ready for that. So this is understanding what you've got out there, being able yep. to address that, remediate, uh, you know, push out changes, or know like, hey, if you haven't, this is what you're at risk of. Absolutely, and yeah. that creates for us, it creates this foundation of both trust between our customers and Red Hat, what they're consuming, 
but then also between Red Hat and our ISVs, because most of our ISVs, they're not in the Linux business, or they're building specialized middleware capabilities on our products. So it's equally important for them to understand that if they're on an out-of-date version of RHEL, um, and they've embedded that in their container, that can cause as many problems, and they need to apply the updates in their stack as our customers. So that kind of gets to the, to the business model a little bit. And you're engineering, but so I have an engineering question, but I think most people in our audience understand that yeah. you know, Red Hat is a company built on open source, and yep. you know, people say, well, why well, buy the cow if the milk is free? Well, you yeah. perfected that model, you know, $2.4 billion in revenue, $3 billion in booking, so you're obviously doing something right, although, not many have been able to, to create, actually nobody's been able to create a business model mm -hmm. like this. My question is from an engineering standpoint, when you're built on open source mm -hmm. and you're not driven toward a proprietary mindset of okay, let's lock them into the next rev, yep. how does that change sort of the engineering mindset, the culture, and the, the, the protocol going forward? I I love it. I have been a Red Hat 11 plus years, and, and every day you're not tied into dropping a new feature and pushing customers to that new version for revenue. And so it changes our mindset of how do we provide value across the entire range of supported offerings that we have. Um, in the case of RHEL, you could stay on some versions of RHEL for quite a while, and we provide value there in keeping that thing working. Uh, but at the same point, we're constantly moving this along, adding new innovation, we're able to provide value there. And it, as an engineer, it is refreshing. Oh, sorry. Uh, That's okay, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll chat for a minute. So you, yeah. uh, you know, you, a lot of companies that are 20 plus years old are criticized, oh, they, they don't innovate. Uh, mm -hmm. You hear that all the time, they, they do incremental R&D, and it's, and, and, it's true, they may spend a lot on R&D, but R&D is like a feature here or another feature yeah. there and designed to just keep putting the crumbs out. And yep. what, what you're saying is incrementalism is not really a fundamental part of your, your plan. Absolutely, we can, you know, we want to provide the same value for a customer if they're on RHEL 6 or they're looking towards the next major version of RHEL and they can move anywhere on that life cycle and that's what they get as part of their subscription. Same thing with with OpenShift and that choice of customers of being able to take a product, consume anywhere on the life cycle of it, it's good for customers and it's nice for us because they're just different ways that you innovate of driving like the next new great feature and you have other customers that you are going to provide value through stability. So for. when you, you, if we go to a lot of these events as you can imagine and you, when, when you talk to the traditional you know, software players, mm -hmm. you get this massive dose of well we do that too. Mm -hmm. We do we do containers and you know we we do cloud and we do yeah. hybrid and so help us understand the difference between how they do it and how you do cloud. I, I think for us, if we picked containers, you yeah. know, every I was talking to a group of customers this morning of every upstream technology we pick that we're going to pull together into our products. We don't just pick them up and repackage them and give them to a customer because we're a spore business. So if it breaks at 3 a.m and I have to re-roll a kernel to be able to fix it, I need to understand every piece in the stack. So we start with, we're going to drive a contributor position in the technology. We, we pick our bets and we go all in on those areas. So Kubernetes will carry, uh, you know, with Google as you know, a great technical partner, we run the majority of the SIGs with them. We have a top contributor position in it. We invest really heavily in understanding the technology inside and out. And I think that's what shows in the customer value of we could certainly take stuff, repackage it, and ship it. It doesn't carry the same value as being able to work with a customer, drive new features into the product, and, and keep them running in prod. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, so you, you mentioned Kubernetes, and I was actually a little surprised this morning in the keynote, I didn't hear Kubernetes. And I think the reason was because I heard a lot about OpenShift, and that's just your mechanism for rolling that out there. Yes, Do your, uh, I'm assuming your customers kind of understand that. Maybe you could help yeah. you know, explain that a little bit more. I, absolutely. So, OpenShift is our enterprise sure. distribution of Kubernetes, and that's sort of the business we're in. We have Linux, and mm. RHEL is our enterprise distribution yeah. of that. Uh, we now have Kubernetes, is a really popular community. OpenShift is yeah. our distribution of that. And yeah, for I, our customers... I, I, I was just saying, I guess you couldn't call it REC, which Red Hat Enterprise <laughs> Kubernetes <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. wouldn't be a good the acronym. world changes too fast. Yeah, yeah. We picked names okay. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a nice model because we're, we know it. It's what we've done for a long time. And 
it builds on everything we've done with Rel and it connects our middleware portfolio as well. So I'm a, I've been on the ops side and I've been on the development side and I, I love seeing us address stuff right in the gap there for customers. And I think that's why we're seeing so much customer traction is uh, it's a sweet spot for where they've had pain and adds a lot of value for them. Yeah. Could you speak a little bit to your customers? Where are they with containers, Kubernetes, uh, that, that, that whole adoption? A lot of them in production, mm -hmm. which is nice. It's, it's nice from a support business because if you have excitement or you have early traction, uh, we're a subscription business. We want to make sure you know, the more customers use it, the more you know, they're going to grow and actually utilize it. And when you hear customers like UHG saying they have 4,000 projects built on OpenShift there, those are, they have built up significant deployments on that. And uh, Barclays, and I know we have a whole list of them that are here today. And so I like that fact of it's not just a cool technology. Customers have taken all the way into production and they're being really successful with it, which as an engineer you love. You want to see people using your products and solving problems with yeah, them. Absolutely. Matt, Matt you talked about um, the, the ethos of commitment and committers yep. to open source projects. One of the challenges for a company like yours is you got to support a lot of different projects, although you say you make your bets. Yeah. We've talked a lot about, okay, will there ever be another Red Hat that emerges in the big data space? You see Cloudera and Hortonworks and they're always sort of mm -hmm. looking at those guys and as a possibility, but they always cite the challenge of having to support so many projects. Yeah. How do you manage that and did you, you've been with Red Hat for a while, did you hit a tipping point at, at some point? Because you're, I mean, certainly you have software margins, 80, 90% you know, margins, you got a great mm -hmm. operating you know, margins, so you've, yeah. you've, you've crossed that chasm, so to speak, to pick up mm -hmm. bromide, but others have had such a challenge. Is it because they have to, they have to support those projects and it just takes a long time and you guys baked over 20 years. I wonder if you could give us some insight there. You know, I think it's, it's as much art as it is science. I would love to say like this is a uh, you know, cold <laughs> formula that we apply, but we have a good gut feeling for if you're going to back a technology or an upstream project, you want to make sure that it's going to expand beyond your own investment. And we've certainly made a lot of wrong bets that the technology doesn't evolve, but you've got to be able to change. And when we see some of the early indicators like in Kubernetes, those are the ones where we like how it's governed, we like how it's structured, we like the other players that are in there. Mm -hmm. And that's just been one of the unique aspects of Red Hat is we, we pick pretty well. <laughs> over hey, time, let's hang so. out. Yeah, and code. <laughs> yeah. So, so Matt, I, I'm, I'm wondering if, if, if you're willing to comment. We were at DockerCon a couple of weeks ago. They've done a shift to how they're managing, kind of mm -hmm. put the Moby project to do the open source stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's your take on that? You know, what would Red Hat positioning there? It's been uh, an interesting dynamic between Docker and Red Hat to watch the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, I think Moby for us, it's one of, it's about 1,600 different upstream projects that yeah. we pull in across our portfolio. And sure. so we're certainly watching it and we see that evolve. We've been involved with the technology for a while now, but, but we don't necessarily know where that's going to go right now, but um, we certainly look at it like we do you know, the whole breadth of, of open source projects we pull in. What else is on your horizon? What are you, what's exciting you these days? You know, I think just seeing the reality of, of hybrid cloud becoming it's becoming real for our customers where they're able, you know, you probably saw some of the Amazon announcements today mm -hmm. where you're able to take services that might be in the public cloud and now pull them on premise. You heard customers talk about taking OpenShift and running that all the way out to the public cloud. And we love that aspect because, you know, being able to use infrastructure to power applications, I think it's going to change IT. And then all the pieces that emanate around that, it's exciting for ISVs, it's exciting you know, I run our management products from Ansible to CloudForms, just a lot uh, that we can do there. Yeah, so. Matt, uh, on the management products, uh, you know, what Dave said, one of the bromides out there, when I became an analyst seven years ago, it's like we could say, well, it's security and management are the biggest yeah. problems we have. Feel like I can go to that well anytime I need to do. Yeah. How are we doing as an industry in management? You know, I, I, obviously you've got your position, but you know, the, the you know, uh, surface area of the landscape is just expanding exponentially. Every, you talked about how many customers are multi-cloud today. Yep. So, you know, we know that there's not a single thing that can do everything, but yeah. you know, how are we doing as an industry and Red Hat specifically? You know, I think you know. from Red Hat's position, we've had, we've had a lot of success with Ansible, just becoming a core automation technology. Because I think the one common thread is 
you have so many choices, you have so many pieces, you have to start automating them. How, how we did IT 15 years ago just will not, it won't scale anymore. Um, I think building up from that stack, how you move to policy-based management, that's earlier in the space, but there is a ton of capabilities, and we've seen customers using, you know, from our perspective, it's combining cloud forms on orchestration and satellite for content, Ansible for automation, because I describe it, so I have the operational teams that run our OpenShift Online environments. That's a, a relatively small group of people that manages millions of applications, and they change faster than a human could push a button. And so, as customers get into that world, you know, we're certainly not in the Google world yet, but when you get that foray, it changes how you have to manage. It has to become automated, it has to become policy driven, and it's fun. I, I like it, like, you know, doing, ops in the, the 90s versus how you do it today, it's, it is refreshing as a, an operator to just have these tools at your fingertips. High, high frequency application development. <laughs> Matt, it thanks really very is. much for coming on theCUBE. <laughs> it's great to see you and uh, congratulations and good luck going forward. Fantastic, thanks guys. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is Cube. we're live from Red Hat Summit in Boston. We'll be right back. Uh -huh.